By the mid-1970s, the Stones were in trouble. Having lost their inspiration, their relevance, and their lead guitarist, they bravely changed their sound and recruited Ronnie Wood, who galvanized the band. Ronnie is sort of like a glue that holds this band together. He came there with an energy that they needed that nobody else provided. His personality imbues the Stones with a vitality that they had been missing for a long time, even though the rest of the world may not know it. Mick and Keith know it. As the decade progressed, the band adapted to new trends, incorporating funk, disco, and punk into their sound. And as guitarist Keith Richards was deteriorating, it was up to Mick Jagger to lead the Stones into uncharted territory. The period from 76 through to the mid-80s, Jagger is really at the helm. Keith was out there, crashed out under the sofa quite a lot of the time, and he really had his work cut out. When the Stones had their backs against the wall, there's that element of sort of fight there. But by the dawn of the 1980s, the creative partnership that had made the Stones so influential was mutating, and a feud between Jagger and Richards threatened to tear the band apart. You've got to have one guy who's extrovert and ambitious and together and controlling and all those things. And then the flip side of that, or the yang to that yin, or however you want to put it, is the more saturnine, darker figure, the creative animus of the thing. But I think at a certain point, those poles become more starkly defined. You know, in other words, you know, Mick becomes more controlling and more ambitious, and Keith becomes more sort of set in his way. This program looks at the Stones' output from 1975 to 1983, a troubled time in which, despite the internal conflicts and the continued struggle to remain relevant, the band still managed to produce enduring work. If you listen to these records today, yes, they are patchy, but there are the last moments of Rolling Stone's majesty and greatness in these records.